हरि ओम ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा नमस्कार टू ऑल a warm welcome to yet another session of global festival of oneness we are celebrating adi guru shankaracharya for a whole month by organizing and listening to various talks on his contribution to sanatana dharma the journey so far has been very interesting and very enriching we have had some very impressive line of speakers today we have swami tatvamaya nanda ji and he is going to speak on topic Jagat Mitya Tvam, the Advaita doctrine that Jagat is Mitya. We are very blessed by your presence, and my humble pranams to you, Swamiji. A brief introduction about this about Swamiji. He is currently the minister in charge of the Vedanta Society of Northern California, San Francisco. Swamiji has served in various centers of the Ramakrishna Order in India as editor. publisher and teacher of sanskrit and indian philosophy before coming to united states in the january of 2012 he had a traditional training in hindu scriptures sanskrit and vedic literature from his early days swami ji is teaching vedantic texts such as shri shankara commentaries on the prasthana trayam and indian philosophy a welcome once again and over to you swami ji Thank you so much, and thank you for giving me the chance to address all of you once again after one long year. And I also compliment all of you for taking up this very holy task of uh, remembering Adi Shankar Acharya and his contributions. Om Sthapaka Yecha Dharma Sya Sarva Dharma Surupine. अवतार वरिष्ठा राम कृष्णा ते नम श्रुतिस्मृतिपुरा आलय करुणालय नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंक यैरिमे गुरभि पूर्व पदवाक्य प्रमाण व्याख्यादेदास्तम प्रणतस्म्यहम so the subject before me is is one of the most profound uh, one of the most well known topics uh, in the entire uh, system of indian philosophical tradition brahma satyam jagat mithya jeevo brahmeva napara shloka adhyana pravakshami yaduktam gandhagodi bihi brahma satyam jagat mithya jeevo brahmeva napara this statement actually sums up the highest peak of humanity's spiritual and philosophical evolution advaita vedanta tells us that there is one absolute eternal reality which is unchanging which is omnipresent which is omnipotent transcendental and immanent it is sarvantaryami sarvavyapi and sarvatita trikala abadida avastha traya abadida shadvikara atida it is the only reality that can be termed satyam it is abadida this is the central principle of advaita then what about the world in which we are living what about different human and non human beings that inhabit this world this world is not absolutely unreal but it is not absolutely real only that alone can be called satyam or nityam that is absolutely real if it remains the same for all times in all conditions in all states of our awareness and there is nothing in this cosmos that can qualify for this distinction so 
this world is only reality it is absolute reality for a person who is not spiritually enlightened who is not aware who is not acquainted with the teachings of advaita and for a inquisitive person let us say for a philosopher maybe for somebody like a plato or even einstein any person who is a seeker of truth whether in philosophy or in modern science this world is inexplicable it is mysterious it is something that we actually do know everything about we know something but it is certainly not everything and for the enlightened one for a shankaracharya for a ramakrishna paramahamsa or for any spiritually enlightened person this world is mithya so the word mithya as i mentioned earlier does not mean absolutely unreal it only means that which is not absolutely real but it is experienced at the empirical level in the name of name and form but when we get out of this world of ignorance when we become spiritually enlightened then we immediately understand that this world is actually unreal unreal uh, in the sense it is not absolutely real this is a central principle of advaita vedanta now as i mentioned there are many misunderstandings about advaita vedanta mostly because people try to understand this as an intellectual construct advaita is actually a matter of our own inner experience shankaracharya himself makes this point suktiya yuktiya swanubhutiya so according to advaita anubhuti or anubhava aparoksha anubhuti that is the ultimate criterion for realization of this advaitic truth and when we realize this then we understand except brahman which is the only absolute reality everything else is only relative or unreal in this in fact one of the unique contributions of advaita to world thought to the heritage of world thought is the gradation of reality according to our perception and comprehension the highest reality the only reality is called parama thiga satta is brahman which is sarvigara dida avastha traya abadida avastha traya dida abadida and so on we call sarva pramana atida sarva pramana avati as we call in the bhashya tradition now in the mandukya upanishad says nanda prajnam the bhagish prajnam the ubhayada prajnam na prajnanaganam न प्रज्ञम न प्रज्ञम अदृश्यम अव्यवहार्यम अग्राह्यम अलक्षणम अचिन्द्यम अव्यपदेश्यम एकात्म प्रत्ययसारम प्रपञ्चोपशमम शांतम शिवम अद्वैतम तदुक्तम मन्यन्ते स आत्मा स विज्ञेयः सो दिस आत्मन दिस दिस एब्सोल्युट रियलिटी व्हाट यू कॉल सत्यम इन अद्वैत ट्रेडिशन इट इज टू बी नोन नॉट इन द सेंस ऑफ एम्पिरिकल नॉलेज we had to realize this as our own true identity now uh, in the advaita uh, dialectical tradition uh, they call it vivartavad i mean how do we uh, uh, reconcile with the reality of our experience of this empirical world around us which we cannot deny which we are a part of in which we live and this idea of the absolute reality which we cannot empirically experience the absolute reality can only be experienced as our own uh, real nature ye sakshat abrokshat brahma it's our own nature it cannot be empirically known using the mind and the five senses of perception like the world is no so vedanta will tell you that this brahman uh, appears to have become this world 
this mithya world of names and forms just as uh, a piece of gold uh, has become golden ornaments uh, a pile of clay has become a number of different pots and pans made of clay really speaking you know suppose there is a pot standing in front of you it's called ghata if you break it it goes back to its clay form and before it was made it was made into a pot it was clay only the, the pot maker uh, used the skills to turn clay into a clay pot so that the the clay pot when it is sitting in front of you then also actually it is only clay only you have uh, superimposed the form of a clay pot and therefore the name the clay pot on that uh, on, on that uh, uh, raw material upadana karana the clay like that this world when you when it is devoid of names and forms and causation then it is non distinct from brahm just as a golden ornament uh, cannot be different from gold out of which it is made so also golden pot cannot be anything other than uh, uh, the raw material of which it is made let's say a clay pot uh, has to remain clay only even when it takes a different form similarly in all the three stages really speaking it is only clay it is only gold the golden or golden ornaments are always gold even when you are wearing it on your neck and a golden cup sorry or a, 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 maybe a, a clay cup a clay pot is only clay even when you are storing water in a, in a jar made of clay that this is uh, one, one of the five definitions of mithyatvam according to post shankarate uh, advaitins beginning with padmapada acharya in the uh, in the panchapadiga uh, uh, sadasatana dhigarnatvam mithyatvam that is that is anirvachaniyada indescribability uh, i mean non definability and also in the later advaitins like prakasha medi hurut panchapadika vivaranam prasannobadu sarva traikaliga nishedha pradiyogitvam va mithyatvam and also his own definition which we are going to discuss elaborately in the in the coming few maybe 45 minutes so also gnana uh, nivartyatvam when you actually realize the truth what disappears is the unreal the the false when you get with when you realize the reality through gnanam then ajnanam or ignorance goes away when the light comes what disappears is naturally darkness so this there are certain definitions uh, which were actually analyzed by madhusudana sarasudhi in advaita siddhi he takes all these definitions from uh, from the uh, post shankarate advaitins like patmapada then uh, prakasha meedi then chitsuka acharya from the tupudipika and also from from nyaya deepavali of uh, ananda bodha and then uh, madhusudana in his uh, unique dialectical work which is one of the most profound Uh, works on advaita philosophy during the post shankarite period he analyzes mithyatvam he and he establishes all the definitions and views uh, which are put forward by uh, padmapada prakasha medi and chitsuka acharya and of course ananda bodha and others we will discuss that later now advaitins uh, believe in what is known as the satkaryavad which essentially means the effect pre exists in cause like that for example let us say the clay pot is a fact the clay pot the pot pre exists in the clay uh, uh, that is upadana karan and through nimitta karanam sahakari karanam through so many other mechanisms the 
clay turned into clay pot. Similarly, a piece of cloth pre-exists in the thread out of which the piece of, uh, the piece of cloth is made. The golden ornaments uh, pre-exist in the gold uh, because the effect pre-exists in cause. The Satkarya Vada has got two uh, streams. One is uh, Parinama, Parinama Vada, which is taken by Ramanuja and uh, Sankhya Yoga, all these philosophers, they follow in the, in the doctrine of real transformation of uh, cause into effect. But Advaitins believe that the cause really doesn't become the effect. It only appears to have become the effect. There is the, for example, if you remove all the gold for, from a golden ornament, you won't get golden ornament any longer. You try to remove all the thread from your cloth, there'll be no cloth. That means uh, your cloth is nothing but the threads uh, which have taken a particular co co configuration. So in reality, that transformation is only uh, apparent, so it's called Vivartavadya. In the Sarvakyan Mamuni, in some shape of Shari Rega, he defines this. Vivartavada se pura bhumihi, Vedandavade parinamavadaha, Vivastides bin parinamavade, soyam samayadi vivartavadaha. You may think at the beginning that it threats uh, uh, the tantavaha, have become uh, the cloth. Or you may perhaps think that uh, this clay has become, I mean, the mud has become uh, the pot. But uh, so you may perhaps believe wrongly that it is Parinama. But when you analyze this Parinama, then you'll understand it is not real transformation, not real Parinama. It is only apparent transformation. So they take up this uh, Vivartavada idea. Means this Jagat is nothing but names and forms namas and rubas and all of the other uh, related elements superimposed upon Brahman. A Jeevan Mukta can look at this world of multiplicity. He won't be seeing multiplicity. He will be seeing this world as non-different, non-distinct from, uh, uh, from Brahman, just as a, uh, maybe a, a goldsmith who is selling golden ornaments in each jewelry shop, he may value the quality, maybe the price of his golden ornaments only uh, under condition of the quality of the gold out of which these ornaments are made. So he may be looking at these golden ornaments, but he's actually seeing only the gold. Similarly, a Jeevan Mukta Brahmanya, he may live in this world, but for him, this world of Nama and Ruba doesn't exist. World exists only as something non-distinct from Brahman. World as Nama Ruba is unreal. The world as non-distinct from Brahman is real. Just like the Dishak of Brahmi. So a person who has brought the light into the room, who has seen that the piece of uh, the rope, the piece of the, that, that twisted thing that is lying on the floor, when it is not a snake, when he realizes that it is not a snake as he previously thought, because when he has brought the light, it's clear that it is not snake. So like he, he may continue seeing the same object which he misunderstood earlier to be the snake. But now he may be looking at it, but he will be seeing only the rope. It, it's not Jaladhara, Bhuchidra, or uh, Danda, or anything. It is only the rope. Similarly, Jivan Mukta realizes the mithyantum of this jagat. And now remember, when we are within this uh, the prison house of jagat, we call Maya, Maya is a functional dimension of mithyantum. Mithyantum or mithya can be considered to be a word used by Shankaracharya to explain this strange, inexplicable mystery of uh, Brahman, eternal Brahman, appearing to have become this non-eternal Namarubhavnagan Jagat. But Maya and in his form Adhyasa or Avidya is a functional dimension 
of Mithyatum. This idea was uh, developed by various scholars during the post Shangarai times. In the, the number is very long. Sikharsha, then Chitsugacharya, of course, later Madhusudana, before him Vidyaranya, then Sarvaknyatma Munis, Prakashatman, Prakashatma Yedi. Uh, Prakashatman was another author who actually was responsible for, uh, 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 the, for the interesting theory of Drishti Srishti Vada. He called Siddhanta Muktavali Prakashananda. He lived around 15th and 16th century. In fact, one reason why many people developed a lot of misunderstanding about Advaita, saying that Advaiti concept is some kind of a world negating it is kind of an illusionary philosophy, which, uh, which is totally uh, idealistic without any element of realism. One important reason for this misconception was uh, the Drishti Sushti Vada, which was put forward by uh, Prakashananda in the 15th and 16th century. Not Prakashananda, who was actually a much greater philosopher. As a dialectician and as a uh, Advaitin, Pragashat Mayeti, who was the author of uh, Pranjapad Digavyagrana, was a far greater Vedantin than Prakashananda, who came much later, who was responsible in his work, you know, Vedanta Siddhartha Muktavali, who expounded this interesting theory of Drishti Srishti Vada, which says that creation exists only so long as there is perception. And uh, that means it is only a mental construction. It seems that he developed this theory, Prakashananda developed this theory to defend Advaita because uh, during the uh, during the 13th, 14th, uh, maybe 15th centuries, uh, especially during the dialectical warfare between uh, Dvaitins, Dvaita philosophers like um, uh, uh, Vyasa Tirtha, Vadi Tirtha, Jay Tirtha and others, of course Madhvacharya also involved, and Advaitins, frequently uh, Advaita was termed to be uh, some kind of uh, dry idealism, world negating idealism, or a kind of Dvaita pretending to be Advaita. For example, um, uh, uh, if you accept uh, uh, Brahman as the only reality, then why should you at all talk about Maya? So it amounts to some kind of a dualism. So in order to defend Advaita, uh, Prakashananda uh, uh, put forward this theory that Drishya Prabhupada is, is, is only a perception. It exists only when we perceive it. Anyway, there's a different subject, which I, but it's important for us to remember when we discuss these mithyantum definitions we are going to do very soon, we have to remember many of the original ideas of Mithyatam and definitions of Mithyatam uh, given by uh, Panchapadika Kara, that is Patmapada and uh, Vivaranagara, Prakashat Mayati, and uh, Chitsuga Acharya, and Tattapatipika, and, and Ananda Bhuda, and others. They were perhaps twisted a bit, and uh, a lot of misunderstandings evolved, mostly thanks to uh, uh, there may be a wrong interpretation of Prakashananda's Siddhanta Muktavali, which is a different matter. Anyway, uh, Along this line, though uh, not directly related to this, uh, three schools of Advaita also emerged in course of time. That is the Vivarana Prasthana, uh, which, uh, which has again followed the tradition of Patmabhada and uh, Prakashat Medis, Panjabhada, Vivarana, and so on. And uh, Sureshwara's tradition is called Vartika Prasthana, which more or less merged with the regard to their projection of the Shabda Parakshavada. And in contrast to this, a different school, Bhamadi Prasthana, which follows the tradition of Vajaspadi Misra, who wrote the, the well-known dialectical uh, Advaitic text, just after Shankaracharya, it is called Bhamadi Tika, which is a commentary on the, some of the uh, Brahma Sutra, Bhashya of Shankaracharya. So uh, I want to uh, take up this, uh, some of these definitions put forward by uh, Patnapada, Prakashat Medhi, and uh, um, Chitsugacharya, and Ananda Bodha. Now, um, 
the first uh, definition of mithyatum uh, it it is from uh, from uh, padmapadacharya from panchapatika according to him sat sat asat anadhigarana rupam anirvachitvam mithyatu so anirvachitvam is mithyatu i mean non definability indescribability something that cannot be uh, defined or explained this is his definition maybe this is this is very similar to uh, the definition of maya uh, by shankaracharya himself in the viveka chudamani sanna pya sanna pya bhyatmika no bhinna pya bhinna pya bhyatmika no sanga pya asanga pya bhyatmika no mahan bhuda anirvachini rupa so the last pada of this shloka mahan bhuda anirvachini rupa it is a great wonder the great mystery which can be defined or explained and understood empirically because maya is the functional aspect of mithya so long as we are within maya or mithya we will think, we will, we are likely to imagine that is the, that's the only thing that exists the world is the only reality that exists the, that's the only ontological reality that exists but through sadhana satushte sampatti nitya nitya vastu vega iha mutra bhrabha viraga samadhi shakti sampatti mumukshatum and sarvana manana andi dhyasa when a person gets out of this trap of maya philosophically termed as mithyatvam then we are out of it so how do we why should we talk about something which is unreal a question is frequently put forward by western translators western academics who may suffer from some of the problems of not going through traditional training of advaita text and a teacher as part of parampara you know uh, parampara is very very important Uh, keeping close to lineage is very crucial to understand the fundamental teachings of advaita vedanta it's almost like a password unless you have the password you cannot open a computer so the question arises so the, the, and i would like to discuss this because this frequently question that's being discussed in many philosophical works published in western countries if the world is mithya then why should we talk about it we normally do not talk about something which which is really non existent now you know it is not western authors even when you read uh, the sapta anubhuti vada the well known uh, dialectical work of ramanuja tradition then also you find that the the the, the concept of avidya maya and mithyatvam were not properly understood by even the ramanuja philosophers and of course even madhva philosophers madhva in yasadeva himself uh, you know he he interpreted uh, atattvamasi the opposite of uh, advaita interpretation of chandogya statement in the in the sixth chapter of chandogya upanishad you find tattvamasi maha ke bahava ke vijara aitadat nimitam satyam satma tattvamasi shetaki so according to dweda interpretation it is atattvamasi so anyway there's a different subject so the question arises we don't normally discuss things which uh, which is totally unreal now in the gradation of realities in vedanta we should keep this in mind paramarthik satta is ಸ್ವೀಕಾರ ಅತೀತ ಜಾಯದೆ ಅಸ್ತಿ ವರ್ತದೆ ವಿಪರಿಣಮದೆ ಅಪಕ್ಷೀಯದೆ ವಿನಶ್ಯ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟ್ ಗ್ರೋಸ್ ಇವೋಲ್ಸ್ ಡಿಕೇಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡೈಸ್ ಔಟ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಸಪಿಯರ್ಸ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಚೇಂಜಸ್ ನೌ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಈಸ್ ಬಿಯಾಂಡ್ ಆರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಚೇಂಜಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಡಸ್ ಇನ
existence because the man is not born it doesn't originate because there is never a time when it doesn't exist so origination of birth is a transition from a state of empirical non existence into a state of empirical existence and also it doesn't die because there is never a time when women doesn't exist so it is sarvikara ati and it is perceived without any change avastha traya abadida in the jagra swapna sushupta avastha so brahman is atman is perceived and recognized to be unchanged so also in the three trigala avastha in the three states of time and it is not caused by anything now the point is frequently they are not not able to understand the real interpretation of vyavaharika satta next after paramarthika satta vyavaharika satta which is the empirical world the world in which we are living in fact we are, i am now sitting here close to san francisco the bay the mountains the roads and the sky all this we cannot say they are unreal in the absolute sense because we are seeing in front of us but we cannot say they re- they are real because after half an hour the sky will be dark after a million years this world will be different maybe a million years ago this world was different a million years later it will be different everything is in a flux is changing so what is changing is not unreal in the absolute sense but not real in the absolute sense because to qualify uh, to the status of paramarthik sat absolute reality it should remain unchanging this vyavaharika sat below there is pradibhasika sat maybe some conceptual reality when you mistake a rope for a snake the snake is not totally unreal you have seen the snake the previous day in a zoo or maybe in the forest and the smriti rupa that smriti the memory is superimposed on the on the object that you see in front of you in the room which is not properly lit there is in semi darkness so the piece of rope lying in the room uh, uh, reminds you of the snake that you saw in the forest yesterday because the same color maybe same shape looks like the snake that you saw yesterday in the zoo so that memory is superimposed so it is not absolutely unreal but the snake is not there in the room it is only a piece of rope now at the last day we have asat something that is that you cannot even imagine to be to exist even the term itself uh, contradicts its existence gandharva nagara vandhya putra these terms are obviously unreal these things are obvious such things if it is vandhya it cannot be vandhya putra if it is uh, city nagara then it cannot be gandhar it cannot be gandharva nagara uh, it's a, a city in the sky or the uh, son of a barren woman or the horns of a hare chasavishana even as an idea it cannot exist so very often in modern times and i think this problem really happened to dwedin academics including vyasadev and others also vaishnavas and also many modern thinkers they mistake vyavaharika satta for asat so they are not able to understand the true implication of mithyatvam this problem always exist in modern times that's why uh patmapada says you know sat asat anadhigarana tiruvam anirvachittum not being the locus of either reality or unreality i mean this 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 mithya jagat is not absolutely real so you are attributing you you impose its existence on this uh, on this namarupa jagat it is not absolutely unreal because it appears to be there but it is not absolutely real because the world everything including our own body changes all the time therefore it is anirvajaniya 
So this is an important point, remember. Now, if you want to get a clear picture of its implication, Shankaracharya writes in the Mandukya Kariga Bhashya, uh, one of the most uh, graphic description, one of the most uh, authentic description of the concept of creation in Advaita literature. In the Mandukari Bhasha, he says, for example, Srishti, Jagat, says, Vibhudi Vistara Ishwarasya Srishti Lidi Srishti Sindhaha Manyandi Nadu Paramartha Sindhaganam Srishtu Adhira Ityartha. So, different views of Srishti existed, which Godapada in Godapada Kariga gives a list of different schools of philosophers who had different views of creation in this world. Vibhudi uh, was one of the aspects, like different, different views of creation. So Shankaracharya says, but uh, those who know that Srishti is, uh, this, this, the, the Jagat itself is uh, not absolutely real, they have no interest in this. So you see, then the picture is given. Indro Maya Vipuradu Vayede Ekshatra. Naki Maya Vinam Sutram Akashe Nikshipya Tena Saidam Arukhya Chakshut Gocharadam Atitya Yudhena Kandasa Chinnam Padidam Panurthidam Chapasyadam Takrata Maya Di Sadatta Chindayam Adro Bhavati. No Bhavati, that's the meaning. Tathaeva. I am Maya Vinaga, Sutra Prasarana Samaha, Sutta Sukna di Vigasaga, the Aruda Maya Visamascha, that's the Rajna de Jasadi, Sutra the Aruda Bia, and Neha Paramatha Maya. So Sutra the Aruda Bia, and Neha Paramatha Maya. So a magician is coming to the, to the king's court. Actually, the old Indian rope analogy stories are found in many travel, traveling, travelers' books also. The old Indian rope. A magician comes to court and he's asked by the king to do some performance and he throws a thread or rope to the sky. Then he climbs. He claims to be climbing to the heavens because he has received a request to come to heaven and help the angels, the devas, in their fight against demons. Then after some time, they hear the, uh, the clash of sound, the, the clash of people fighting and bodies are cut into pieces, falling down. And people falsely, wrongly believe that there's a war going on in the heavens, etc. And then, then he says, you know, um, Sutra, the real Maya, the real magician is not climbing to the skies through the rope. He's, he's standing there without doing anything. So the actually all these are happening and the whole world Everything that happens in this world is more or less like the performance of the magician who claims to climb to the heavens and uh, actively get involved in some kind of fighting act activities. Now, this is the uh, this is an interesting uh, concept of creation. The viewers, the onlookers, are seeing all this happen, but but they understand that. Uh, it is only an illusion. Remember, illusion is not absolutely unreal. Illusion is not a vacuum. Illusion is something that you believe, believe to be real. So, mithya. Mithya is only something that you perceive to be different from what actually it is. When you perceive this world, uh, the mithya jagat, and you think this jagat is real, it's only because you see this jagat uh, to be something other than what it actually is. It is nothing but Brahman appearing uh, in the form of this Nama Rupa Atmagam Jagat. You, you, when you uh, look at Brahman through the prison, there's the glasses of names and forms and causations, 
you see this world. When you become a Jeevan Mukta, then you are like the magician who is standing there at the court in the middle of the middle of the hall without doing anything, but only the onlookers are deluded into thinking that is uh, climbing, throwing a, 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 a rope and is climbing and going to the sky and so on. Like that, when we get out of this uh, Maya, uh, Mithya Tum, then we understand that it is only Mithya. But we, when we, so long as we are within it, we won't be able to understand it is that it is unreal. But Vedanta tradition tells you that you should develop Sadhana Dadushtya Sambhati, Nitya Nitya Vastu Viveka, Igamutra Prabhu Viviraka, Samadhi Sakram Sambhati, Mumukshutum, the Sravana Manana, gradually Nidityasana, and so on. When this happens, and also along with Karma Yoga, Shankaracharya himself says, you know, Karma Nishtaya Ka Chitta Siddhidvarena Pushartha Hiddhum, Na Swadhandrena, Jnana Nishtadu Swadhandrena Pushartha Hiddhu, Anyan Abheksha. When we practice Karma Yoga, when we practice unselfishness, pure life, pure thought, uh, what we call yamas and yamas in yoga tradition, or uh, uh, samadhi shatka sambhati, uh, or sadhana dhushtaya in uh, Vedantic tradition, then we reach a level of mental purity, and then we realize that this world, this jagat that we are living in, of which we are a part, is actually only changing phenomena. But it is only a matter of experience. It is not an intellectual construct. So that's an important point to remember. That's why, you know, the word Jagat itself comes from the Dhadu Gama. Gama means to move, to go, and so on. Now, again, another important point to remember, that's again in this context. Shankaracharya did not totally deny the real, the empirical reality, the real, relative reality of this Jagat. That's why he takes great pains to contradict uh, many of the views put forward by Vijnanavadins and Shunyavadins in the Karma Sutra Bhasha itself. The second definition of Mithyadu, which Madhusudana in his the Siddhi refers to, which he defends and establishes in his response to, in his reply to uh, Nyayambuda Vyasatirtha, he said, historically is important. Uh, intellectually encountered between the greatest uh, Dvaita dialectician and maybe one of the greatest uh, post-Shankarite post dialecticians of Advaita tradition. The second definition is, is that that's also very important. Pradibannu badhu traikandika nishedha pradiyogittam va mithyatum. I mean, the world of multiplicity is eternally Raikalika Nishedha Pradyogi. Eternally, in all in the in the past, present, and future, Buddha Vartamana Bhavi in Brahman. So multiplicity is uh, negated on the very object in which it is found to be existing so long as we are within the realm of avidya. So Neka Nanastik in Jana, this is a Upanishad Vakyam. That is taken as a pramana. Uh, this, uh, this was put forward by Prakash Armayedi in Panchapadika Vivaranam, which is actually an important book uh, be belonging to the Vivarana Prasthana. So, Pradivanno Badu, Traigali, Nishida Prayogitam Va, Mithyatam. The third def definition is Jnana Nivartyatum Mithyatum. Jnana Nivartyatum. When you get knowledge, then something disappears. What is contradicted by knowledge? Then what happens, you know, the illusory cognition, the wrong ignorance is sublated. And when light comes, if somebody goes away, that somebody should be darkness. When knowledge comes, when something disappears, that something should be ignorance. Now, we have to remember, as I mentioned earlier, in, in the, the second definition, uh, Prakashatma it says, what is eternally negated in the same locus? So it's almost like this, you know, 
you superimpose sarpa buddhi sarpatam in vijju and when you bring light on the same object sarpa buddhi is negated so it's not that the sarpa or snake was there then it went away it ran away not at all when you bring light on the very object on which you superimposed because there is not in a light sarpa buddhi you thought the rope was a snake now the snake idea disappears on the same locus pratibhanobadho traikalika nishedh pratiyogittum mithyatam this is the view of prakashatman the of course here something very interesting is shankaracharya in fact at this very point you know in the brahma sutra there is a very famous statement he says you know when he refutes uh, bhatta pravanja's view uh, shankaracharya makes some very important statement in the brahma sutra bhashya he says nanu anegaatmakam brahma yada vrutsu aneka shaaka evam അനേക ശക്തി പ്രവൃത്തിയുക്തം ബ്രഹ്മ അത ഏകത്വം നാനാത്വം ശുഭയമപി സത്യമേവ യഥാ വൃക്ഷ ഇത്യേകത്വം ശാഖ ഇതി ച നാനാത്വം യഥാ ച സമുദ്രാത്മന ഏകത്വം ഫേന തരംഗാദ്യാത്മന നാനാത്വം യഥാ ച മൃതാത്മന ഏകത്വം ഘട ശരാവാദ്യാത്മന നാനാത്വം തത്ര ഏകാംശത്വേന ജ്ഞാന മോക്ഷ വ്യവഹാര സേത്സ്യതി നാനാത്വം ശേനതു കർമ്മ കൺ കർമ്മകാണ്ഡാശ്രയ ലൗകിക വൈദിക വ്യവഹാരവും സേത്സ്യതി ഇതി ഏവം ച മൃതാതി ദൃഷ്ടാന്ത അനു അനുരൂപ ഭവിഷ്യന്റെ ഇതി ആക്ച്വലി ശങ്കരാചാര്യ ഹിയർ പ്രത്യക്ഷ പൂർവപക്ഷ ഫ്രം ദി പെർസ്പെക്ടീവ് ഭത്തു പ്രപഞ്ച ഹുവസ് എ ജ്ഞാന കർമ്മ സമുച്ചയവാൻ ബിഫോർ ഹി എംഫസൈസസ് ദ ഐഡിയ നേഹനാസ്തി കിഞ്ചന സംതിങ് സിമിലർ ടു ദിസ് ഇസ് ഈസ് ഭത്തു പ്രപഞ്ച വ്യൂ ഈസ് we can accept nanatvam and also ekatvam for example as a tree it is ekatvam but when you look at these different branches and leaves and so on there is nanatvam similarly as a notion samudratmana ekatvam it's one but uh, the, the, there are waves and there are um, um, that there are different moments of water which create the illusion that that uh, ocean is throwing up different objects you know foams and waves and tsunamis and so on so we can accept both egatum and also nanatum so this is the view of bhatru pravanja uh, his view is projected as a purva paksha by shankaracharya in his brahma sutra bhashya when bhashyakara uh, replies it cannot be so na evam siyat murtike teva satyam idi pragadi matrasya drishtande satyatva avadharana so bhashyagara quotes this famous verse from chandogya in the tattumasi mahavakya which of course it comes the early part uh, before tattumasi upadesha comes for the first time only in ninth khanda there continues up to 16th khanda but the early part of the sixth chapter of chandogya upanishad this kam murtige teva satyam that is uh you may have a number of pots and pans different utensils made of mrut of mud or clay but actually everything is non distinct and non different from mrut or clay that is the only reality so all the uh, i mean all the uh, uh, waves and foams and tsunamis are nothing but the same water which in one state look calm and quiet like no ocean in another state just become turbulent tsunamis waves and foams nacha va the vacharambhan shabdena cha vigarjadasya anudatva abhidana ാഷ്ടാന്തികെ അപി ഐതാത്മ്യം സർവം തസ്സത്യം ഇതി ച പരമകാരണസ്യ സത്യത്വാവധാരണാ സ ആത്മാ തത്വമസി ചേതകേതോ ഇതി ച ശരീരസ്യ ബ്രഹ്മഭാവോപദേശ സോ ഭാഷ്യകാര എക്സ്പ്ലൈൻ ദിസ് എവ്രിങ് ഈസ് നോൺ ഡിസ്റ്റിങ് ആൻഡ് ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് ഫ്രം ദ സെയിം റിയാലിറ്റി 
So, uh, defending uh, the Vanishadi statement, Nehana Nasti Ginchana, you can find this, uh, these two uh, definitions of Mithyatam is defined. Again, in the, the third definition, as I mentioned, Jnana Nivartyatam, that's again the Pramana Vakya is, you know, Vidwan Namarupa Vimuktaha means when a person gets Vidya Jnanam, then Nivartyatam, he gets liberation from ignorance, from the uh, from uh, this Jagat Satya Buddhi, from the wrong notion that Jagat is Satya, one gets liberated from that wrong notion and realizes the fact that Jagat is only Mithya. The fourth definition is from Chitsukacharya, that is from Tattupadipika. Swasraya Nishtha Atyanta Bhava Prayogitum Mithyatum. That is the fourth definition. The locus of which is equally the locus of which is eternal negation. So, where you found it more or less similar to some of the earlier uh, definitions. You know. So, you have, uh, I mean, you, you thought there is something there, but on, in, on the very locus is negation takes place. The locus of which is equally the locus of eternal negation. I mean, uh, where you actually thought something exists, on the very spot, its absence, its negation takes place. So, of course, Madhusudana actually modifies this. So, Madhusudana modifies this. It's a different subject. Now, now we'll come to the last and the most important uh, definition in some ways. Some dialecticians consider this as very important. That is the fifth definition. That is, Sat Vivekta Tum Va Mithya Tum is consistent in being different in reality. I mean, uh, the Mithya Jnanam or Mithya or, or what you thought to be real before you got realization, before you got Abharakshana uh, Bhudi. What you earlier thought to be real is now understood to be different and distinct from the absolute reality. So Jivan Mukta, looking at this world, he continues watching the same world. He is looking at the same world, which he thought to be real before he became a Jivan Mukta. But he is looking at it differently. And the fact is, he may be still living in this world. He may be interacting with this world, but in his behavior, in his interaction, frequently that awareness of that Jagat uh, Mithyatum or uh, his conviction of Brahman is only Sityam, that conviction comes again and again. That such a Jivan Mukta continues living this world. He has to continue uh, till his Prarabdha Karmas are worked out. But in the midst of all days, always there is this nagging awareness. The awareness will be always present in him. And this awareness will make him a better human being. Going beyond all these, I must say a few things. You know, Jagan Mithyatum is not just a philosophical construct. Just got a very deep message for our own times. Most of the time, people in modern age, in the modern time, they suffer because they superimpose permanence on what is essentially impermanent. And that creates a lot of anxieties and problems and worries. That's why, you know, this Jagat Mithyatum, the Advaita doctrine that Jagat is Mithya, has a deep psychological and spiritual value. It can help us to live in this world better. It can improve our psychological health. When we are facing a problem, I to be in the form of a doctor suddenly diagnosing the eye of cancer, or maybe some unfortunate tragic event, like one of your near and dear ones passes away, or maybe your stock, the stock markets collapse, you lose a lot of money in the bank, in stock markets, all these things happen. And then people worry too much. 
people commit suicide. They take to drugs and alcohol and people suffer from depression because they wrongly think that these problems are eternal. The problems like bad health, you may recover your health through treatment, that you forget. Instead, you think your ill health, bad health is a permanent situation. So also, when, when you lose your job, people, people, when they lose their job, they get shocked that uh, put them in a sort of psychological imbalance. And people take to drugs and alcohol very often to forget their worries, thinking that the solution, but actually worries will return to great force. All this happens because we superimpose permanence on what is essentially impermanent. This is an important thing to remember. So Mithyatam has got this deep message of reminding us of the fact the world and all the problems, all, all the good and bad events are essentially only relate to you. They are bound to certain time conditions and certain circumstances. These circumstances change. They, 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 they change from time to time. So an Advaitin can make use of this Jagad Mithyatam doctrine as a, some kind of a tonic for healthy mind, for keeping the mind healthy and stable. Because we always mentioned earlier, we always attribute, but we do adhyasa, not only on sarpatum, on didju, but we do adhyasa every day, every moment. When we are facing a problem, we think that problem is going to be there all the time. We should always remember, Everything in this world is bound to change. Jagat here includes everything. Our body, mind, complex. Everything happens in this world. All these are bound to change. They belong to this umbrella category, Mithya. We call Maya, whatever it is, in functional form. So, so long as we remember the fact that everything in this world is bound to change, is impermanent, is a great, is a great, uh, a great consolation, is a great source of psychologically, is a great help. But that's why Matas Murvir Jnanam Apohanamcha. Gita says, you know, Lord says, from me alone, memory, knowledge, and forgetfulness both come from the same source, divine source. So very often we forget this. So Mithyatum, the doctrine of Mithyatum frequently reminds us of something that we know intellectually, but we forget all the time. Every person knows that everything in this world is changing. Even a primary school student, a kindergarten student also knows that every day things change. Change is the part of empirical world, Jagat, so to speak, because it is Mithya. But we forget that. Our intellectual awareness doesn't help us at the emotional level. If a crematorium manager who's running a crematorium, who is uh, uh, seeing death every day, maybe every, every hour, he also somehow believes that death is something that can be, that can be avoided in life. So frequently, when there's slight problem, immediately we get a shock. So actually, in other words, Advaita is pure, simple common sense. Pure, simple, spiritual common sense. Jagad Mithyatum is the crucial element in interpreting Advaita as pure common sense. What we know intellectually, what modern physics tells you, what everyone knows, but nobody is able to make use of at their emotional life, Advaita reminds you again and again to make use of as a creative, constructive, positive psychological tool. So going beyond, uh, beyond its role as a very crucial element of Advaita philosophy, Advaita metaphysics, Jagat Mithyatam, the doctrine that Jagat is 
impermanent, it is only relative, it is not eternal. It has got deep message for our times. Thank you, Namaskar. You are most welcome to ask questions. Uh, thank you, Namaskar. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tatsut Sri Ramakrishna Pranamastu Thank you, Swamiji, for that uh, very wonderful lecture on covering different aspects of Mithyatvam and how it is related to uh, very important, how it is an important aspect in understanding Vedanta. Thank you for that. Uh, if you have any questions, audience. Okay. Uh, there's one question who says, when Brahman is Gunatita, where did turbulence arise? Because it is the Vikshepa which causes Avidya. Please clarify when there is nothing else other than Brahman, how did all this mess, Advaita turbulence arise? Yeah, the turbulence or difficulty arises in our absence of awareness of Brahma Sati. The idea that Brahman is the only reality. Uh, an intellectual conviction doesn't help in our life. Frequently, you know, in the intellectual understanding doesn't help. Intellectual understanding is important. Paroksha Jnanam is important. But Paroksha Jnanam should be supported. It should become Avaroksha Jnanam. And we can translate Paroksha Jnanam into Avaroksha Jnanam only through Karma Yoga. Doing something good, something noble, study Vedanta scriptures, think and contemplate and slowly you find you find the idea that well I am not just changing body my complex can you hear me yes we can hear you yes so as we evolve further the idea that Brahman is only reality it becomes more and more a fact of our experience and our life there's an important point, remember. Advaita doctrine, the Brahman, Brahman is, only, is only reality. Brahma Satyam Jagad Mithya. This doctrine is helpful, no doubt. Remember, but as an intellectual concept or an idea, it's not enough. But it's, it's a great way to begin our spiritual journey. Uh, once a person develops the habit of reading, imbibing Advaitic ideas, then the conviction itself becomes stronger and stronger. Then it begins to influence, it begins to color his actions and thoughts and emotions. And then if you have a problem, if you find the, oh, it's nature of the world. Somebody tells you that your friend has a health problem, a relative has a health problem, or this man has lost his job. Oh, it happens. He will get a job next next month, perhaps. Next year, perhaps. If he has a health problem, it will be remedied, it will be cured, maybe through tr treatment. So you don't you don't uh, uh, in, you don't impose superimpose permanence on anything that is impermanent related to this world, either our body or life or anything. So the ability to focus our mind on something that is eternal and to take everything else now stride. You can laugh at your problems, but you should not become lazy. You should not become inactive, insensitive. You should work hard to solve your problems. You should work hard to find solutions to your problem. If you have lost a job, again, you should work hard to get another job. But at the same time, when the loss of job becomes a source of nagging pain, then you can tell your own mind, why should you worry? Losing job is part of life. In this impermanent world, nothing can be permanent. So Advaita, even as an intellectual idea, it is helpful. But if a person uh, goes, uh, goes on continuing thinking and contemplating on this intellectual idea, this, and also along with that, he also practices karma yoga. And then slowly his mind also begins to evolve. His mind also begins to absorb this truth more and more. 
and that will have a positive transformative effect on his life and his mind. Let's call it habits. Thank you, Swamiji, for that. Yeah. Um, I think Maheshi, your question is answered, but I think he is also in, um, has another question as uh, I'm beginning there was only Brahman. Then from where did the first turbulence arise? I mean, first. Yeah. Yeah, really, you know, the due to ignorance and ignorance avidya. Avidya, first of all, avidya cannot come from anywhere. Avidya is essentially non-existent. So, avidya is anadi basanta. It has no beginning, but it has an end. That is self, this combination of anaditum and, you know, the fact that it has no beginning, at the same time it will have an end, it subsumes essentially it has, it has no real entity, you know. Avidya. If it's something that doesn't exist, then why should we talk about it? We realize that avidya is avidya doesn't exist only when we come out of it. We, we realize that Maya itself is not an absolute reality only when we come out of it. We understand the world is mithya only when we come up to the wrong notion that this world is not mithya. So, this is an important point. Remember, where does it begin? You are, we are trying to look at Dvaita from the Dvaita pluralistic point of view. First of all, it is a matter of experience. It's a matter of it. Remember, Advaita, Advaitis themselves tell you that Yukti or logic or reasoning cannot find all answers in Advaita. As you evolve in spiritual life, as you move further towards experience, your questions cease to be questions. There are no more questions. Questions just merge into silence. That's it. Questions merge into silence. You may ask the question that why, why, why are the debates even pundits? It's only to preserve the tradition. Debates cannot take you to experience. Intellectual, intellectual ideas cannot take you to experience. That, in fact, all Vedanta books themselves tell you that the truth is beyond books. Then why are there books for? Books are necessary for us to study, for giving it, give a paroksha jnana, intellectual idea. And then, with truth for sravanam, for listening, then for thinking, and slowly this Advaitic idea goes deeper and deeper into a system, and then you find these questions merge into silence. Questions cease to be questions. Questions do not get an answer in Advaita. As you evolve further, these questions themselves disappear. Otherwise, you know, are you in the in you find you can see in the in the Brahmanic and Chandogya, it's a long debate. You find debates are important only to live to show us the limit of debates. Vacham agocharam sarva pramana vadi. These are the terms used in the Vedic tradition. Absolute reality, absolute reality beyond all pramanas. Pramanas include books, thinking. Pratyaksha, Anumana, Gumana, Sabda, Arthavat, Anubhrat, the Pramanas are included. The absolute reality, Advaita and Abhudhi is beyond all Pramanas. It is beyond, beyond names, beyond definitions. Uh, thank you, Swamiji. That was very well explained. Uh, thank you. also are interested to know about your contact details. How can they uh, contact you? Okay, for you, you can, first of all, you can, uh, I can mention, I have my website, uh, I'm the minister in charge of the Vedanta Society of Northern California, San Francisco, We is a San Francisco branch of Vidamoksha Mission, just founded by Swami Vivekananda in 1900. We are the first uh, and oldest Hindu temple in the Western world, which was built in the year 1905. And... Um, uh, and my website address is sfvedanta.org, sfvedanta 
dot org. See, can you, Bobby, can you write in your system my email address, and telephone, uh, website address? Eh? Yeah, uh, uh, they are putting my email address to address with the daughter in the chat. So we are giving, uh, for the last several years, we have been giving uh, in person classes. And for the last uh, three years after the corona onset, we are giving uh, online classes to the university students of Stanford, Hindu Students Association, Yoga Sutras. Now we have already started a, a traditional class interpreting. Uh, various textbooks of Indian philosophical traditions every Sunday, 6 p.m. San Francisco time. That will be 6.30 a.m. in India. San Francisco, 6 p.m. in the evening. In India, Monday, 6.30 a.m. That is, our time is Sunday, 6 p.m. Indian time, Monday, 6.30 a.m. We are giving uh, classes. It's already started uh, about a month ago. Three classes already over. The fundamental text of Indian philosophy is an academic uh, program attended by academics around the world. So you are most welcome to see our website sfvedanta.org and my email address is tattwaitsvedanta.org. Please, our devotees, write in it. Yeah, I'm very happy to be part of your Great noble effort to remember the greatest name in Indian philosophical tradition, Shankaracharya. Okay, thank you and congratulations to everyone. Yeah, thank you so much, Samaji. Yeah. Um, other one is uh, another question is ignorance is natural. Ignorance is about the world and I. We do not question why we are ignorant about physics until we learn about it. Simply ignorance is about I is also natural. Vedanta is a pramana to remove the ignorance. So, okay. Very good. Thank you. Now, ignorance is actually a very inaccurate translation of the Sanskrit word avidya. So, avidya, maya, and mithyatva, all these are interlinked. So, ignorance uh, is an English translation. I would rather use the word avidya. Or Maya. As I mean, somebody mentioned, it is Avarana and Vikshe. When we are under the power of ignorance or avidya, then the reality is concealed and in its place, something that is totally unreal is superimposed. Avarana and Vikshe. So long as we are not aware of the true nature of the reality, a false nature, a false projection is superimposed on it. So this happens. So, and as we evolve in spiritual life through sadhana, sadhushtaya, sampati, four fundamental disciplines, which are universal. First of all, we must have a sense of what is real and what, and what is not real. And then we must uphold what is real and disregard what is unreal. And the third stage, we have Samadhi Shrika Sambhati. Naturally, we sense control, control, controlling the mind, then contentment, you know, Samadhama, Uparadhiti, Diksha, Shaddha, Samadhanam, all this, the third. And then Mumukshutta, a strong urge for spiritual enlightenment. So, Nitya Nitya Vastu Vega. Along with that, we, have, we should have a tendency to listen, to feed our mind with gay spiritual ideas, to contemplate the meaning, sravanam, maranam, and then go deeper and deeper. Now remember, you may ask the question, where do we begin? There is a way to begin. We can begin our journey in Advaita right now, today. If we can do something good, karma yoga. Karma yoga is recommended by Shankaracharya and all Advaitis as a, as a great beginning towards um, spiritual fitness of the mind, what we call chitta shuddhi. Through the practice of karma yoga, we accumulate good samskaras, healthy samskaras, and slowly 
our mind turns to higher and higher ideas. What we do will certainly have its effect on the mind. Mind will be purified through the practice of unselfishness and purity, self-discipline. And that will uh, naturally uh, uh, take our mind to higher levels. Is again, we have to begin somewhere, doing something good and having a sense of higher value in life and upholding that higher value, that is Nitya Nitya Vastu Veka. And when this happens, we will naturally disregard what is not really good for our life. This is how a person begins his journey in spiritual life. Um, we have one more question from Maheshti. He says that uh, he uses the Einstein equation E is equal to mc square. So his question is where did the first energy arise when everything is mithya? Yeah. You know, the energy is a term that can be equated with the spiritual reality. So sometimes there are many modern thinkers who equate this energy as such. Not energy in its different forms, but energy as such. In fact, in Vedanta, it's called Prajnanam Brahma. Prajnanam. Uh, Prajnanam is pure awareness. Awareness without being hooked into an object. Uh, pure awareness. So energy can be equated to pure awareness. And that is everywhere. That is all pervading. From that awareness, different objects come into existence. They exist in that energy and they disappear. So that's why in the in the Dhrishti Vivega, Sisti Nama Brahma Rupi Satchidananda Vastuni Abdho Fena Diva Sarva Nama Rupa Prasarana. Creation is compared to the emergence of waves and foams and drops of water and tsunamis perhaps in the ocean. So they emerge in the ocean, they exist for some time. And they merge back into the ocean. And again, this happens. So creation in Vedanta is only projection of energy in one particular form. But after maybe some millions of years, the created world goes back to its cause. So creation is, it's called Sarga, it's called the Puranic language. You know? uh, the creation is only projection of something. And this projected, created uh, world may exist for some billions of years, perhaps. And then, well, can, we, can we ever imagine when did Big Bang begin? What was the before Big Bang? And if there's a big crunch that is going to happen, let us see, what will happen after that? So we have to go beyond the beyond the uh, uh, beyond the limitations of time and space, even to intellectually think of that. So in Vedantic tradition, these transmigratory cycles of creation, existence, and then dissolution, which means effect going back to cause, and again re-emergence, this cycle continues. That's the idea behind I think Emerson's, sorry, Einstein's theory comes somewhere to explain the temporary, a small little movement in this transmigratory cycle. That's all we can say. Yeah. Thank you. The, Thank another you. question is, in meditation, what do we focus on when you encounter so many thoughts and desires? Yeah. In spiritual life, you know, when you, first of all, we must have a positive uh, counter focus. Normally, our mind is dragged into different things, different distractions in this world. Our eyes, our ears, sense of touch, sense of smell, sense of hearing, everything drags our mind into different things around this world. That's nature. That's why when you're watching the TV, you are, when you are reading the newspaper, you are no problem. When you sit in your meditation room, the whole, all the demons in, your, in our own mind emerge in the form of conflicts and disturbance and so on. So as a beginning, we must 
prepare for meditation, not in the room, the meditation room, but outside, in a workplace. What we read, what we think, the kind of persons we associate with, all have an effect on our mental structure. So first, the first thing that is required is we must have a counter focus, some higher ideal, reading some good books, dis discussing some higher ideas. This will help us to create a right atmosphere, a right preparation for our mind. Before you go to meditation, why don't we, why don't we listen to some devotional songs, some auspicious songs? If a person works 10 hours in the office and then going to home and then immediately starts meditation, he'll be only thinking of what happened to his office. But before that, one should try to uh, listen uh, or to some devotional music or read some uh, auspicious holy books or uh, discuss something that is auspicious so that we, our mind will be brought to a higher level and then we must try to meditate. If we start meditation all of a sudden, then all the thoughts and conflicts will emerge and that will be a great distraction, great disturbance. So mind should be slowly lifted up by listening to, through listening to devotional music or reading or things like that, preparatory disciplines. Okay, thank you for that wonderful time. Thank you. Okay. Uh, another question is, Atma does not exist in time. Time exists in Atma. So there is no room for causation in the sphere of Atma. So why does first, second, cause, effect, etc. would not carry any meaning in a principle such as Atma? Yeah, okay. First of all, Atman doesn't exist in time. Atman is beyond time. Time is only... Uh, in modern philosophy, if you consider time as a philosophical construct, time is itself not definable. In our empirical life, we can think of time only as interval between two events. That's the only way to understand time. And past, present, and future are again the distinction, the line of demarcation between the past and the present and between the present and future, those lines of demarcations are only imaginary. So when, it, when, when you go deeper and deeper into your own inner soul, then you actually transcend time. So remember, Atman doesn't exist in time. Atman is beyond time. Atman is transcendental. This is an important point, remember. So if we should not get away with the impression, that's only, that's one of the views of the Indian materialists, you know, that everything exists in time. Uh, if we, we can only believe in what we pursue empirically and everything in, is in terms of time, space and causation. That is, that is, that's against Vedanta. Brahman or Atman is beyond time. Time, space, and causation. Beyond time, space, and causation is transcendental. It's called Trigala, Abhadida, and Avastha, uh, and Shad, uh, uh, Shadvikara, Tita. Beyond six changes and beyond the uh, distinction in terms of past, present, and future. That is what, that is what Atman is. Yeah. Thank you for that. Uh, I think I have one last question. Um, okay. Maheshi has uh, loved your previous answer. So his one more question is, yeah. what is your answer to hard problems of consciousness, which is troubling all Western scientists like Chalmers? Well, you know, I, what really happened, I, I, I'm in this country for the last almost 11 years. And they have met and discussed with many intellectuals from different spheres. Many of them have taken some idea from some Vedantic books, and they they have given uh, they have given some interpretations mixing psychology and physics. Um, 
You see, in Vedanta, I tell you, because we are discussing Vedanta now, in Vedantic tradition, you can take up an idea from Vedantic books, but first of all, you should get the authentic interpretation of those concepts in Vedantic books. Then you can expand these ideas in your own language. This is an important point to remember. If you take one cherry picking, you take one idea from something, they project it and give it a very bombastic, high sounding term. And that's what is happening now. A lot of Vedantic ideas are selling like hot cakes, and especially in this age of information technology and, and, and internet. Many of these things are taken up, appropriated, like mindfulness, for example. Mindfulness is, I'm just giving an example to, as a part of my answer. Mindfulness is nothing but the name of a discourse that Buddha gave, Maha Sati Upattana Sutta, or Sati Upattana Sutta, Smurdi Upasthana Sutram, or Maha Smurdi Upasthana Sutram. It is actually a Buddha's discourse on how to remain in a state of perfect, permanent awareness. Always to remain in a state of permanent awareness uh, without being attached. That is a very great discipline. That is taken up and it is distorted and it is like elastic. It is extended to all directions into something that Buddha will not recognize. They never mention Buddha's name. They never mention Buddha's name. Like that, consciousness. You take one little piece from, let us say, Ashtavakra Samkhita or Yoga Vasistha. There are great gems in these books. So what happens, you know, even if you're totally uninitiated and not actually trained in the proper tradition, if you read a book, a translation, you find something interesting. And if you have enough, uh, there be enough, uh, power of language, making use of, you can make use of these concepts. So very often con consciousness, uh, consciousness is nothing but awareness. What Aitari um, uh, 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 Yoga calls Prajna. Prajna is consciousness. Prajna is nothing but awareness without being hooked into an object. Awareness, pure awareness the universal cosmic awareness. So uh, I don't normally get very much hooked into these controversial questions because I believe that any attempt to equate uh, some of the more profound Vedantic concepts to what is floating in the air here, it will be a betrayal, betrayal to our Rishi Parambara, our great tradition. Vedanta is a precious, spiritual heritage. Anyone can take a Vedanta and interpret and expound it, but he or she should do the minimum justice of being loyal to the tradition. For example, if I want to study and if I want to expound Christianity, uh, I should first of all study the Bible and I should first of all try study the authentic textbooks in Christian theology make an attempt to do that, then I can give my own interpretation. But if I take one little piece, one quotation, then give my own interpretation, my own, using my own vocabulary, I, it will be, it will not be proper. So many of our Vedantic ideas are being appropriated, taken out of context and interpreted. And this is happening you know, at all levels. Many, unfortunately, many scholars, many others, even from India, they are doing this because it's just like uh, in this age of, uh, you know, publicity, uh, this age of, you know, marketing, using latest techniques and marketing, YouTube, internet, this happening. Anyway, so that is not part of our discussion or topic of discussion right now. Thank you very much for the wonderful questions and discussion. Thank you. Namaskar. Thank you. Thank you, Swamiji. Thank you. So uh, we come to the end of the session and uh, do like us on uh, Facebook and uh, Twitter. 
and in the evening also we have a session uh, six inquiries of embody your essential nature of wholeness by richard miller do join us then thank you yeah, thank you ma'am